It was like a cloud of fire that just came down. You saw angry streaks of red in the north sky. The Great Hinkley Fire was one of the most terrifying, horrifying forest fires in the history of the world. There would be a flame that would come up from the ground, travel 600 feet and snuff out a human life like a mosquito. A ball of fire would come down and it would engulf a structure, a building, and then bounce off like a ping pong ball, take it up into the sky and it would explode. A firestorm is a very large wildfire, and it's also known as a conflagration. And it's unique in a sense that it creates its own wind system. There's something called a fire triangle, and uh, the three pillars include temperature, wind, and moisture. Because these very warm temperatures at the surface, they're superheated due to the extreme temperature of the wildfire. Well, they begin rapidly rising. And uh, once it hits a certain height, this colder air aloft starts to rush in to replace it. Cold air is very heavy and dense. So what happens is you have this constant flow of a warm air rising and cold air sinking. And this constant flow allows for very strong winds to occur. Winds would, uh, at times they would pick up people that would uh, they'd be off the ground for maybe 10, 20 feet. There was one person where the wind gave him a lift for about several hundred feet right down to the Kettle River. In 1894, September 1st, we had a storm system that was passing across northern Minnesota. And as we went through the day, the winds picked up. Very strong winds allowed these wildfires that were kind of just smoldering to uh, pick up an in intensity. And then they all grew into one large fire. This fire, was on September 1st and 2nd, 1st and 2nd, 1894. A lot of people say, well, it ended about September 1st, 4 or 5 p.m., but there was a pocket way up north where people were fighting for their lives even at 1 a.m. the next day. The Great Hinkley Fire was one fire district of many on September 1st. These different fire districts started in central Minnesota. There was a huge one that was in Wisconsin, went all the way up to Michigan. Each of these separate fire areas, another one is Foley, Malacca, started at practically the same time. So in other words, these different fire districts, separate as they were, started at the same time. And that right there is a clue to what might have started it. So what does this mean about the start of the fire? We have theories which we can't prove. One is that when you have these vortexes of fires, there's usually something that stops it. The theory is that there's something that didn't stop it and uh, the fire could just flow across hundreds of miles and drop down in other places. That's one possibility. Uh, another possibility is that we could have had a comet that split into pieces and then the pieces came down and started these separate fires. What really made it a booming town was Brennan Lumber Mill that's when all of a sudden you got all these extra streets in the early 1890s. And they had lumber camps. They, that's what created the big railroad yard in the central part of Hinkley. And they would put those logs on the north and south grindstone rivers and then those two forks would become one in Hinkley known as Grindstone River right by the Brennan Lumber Mill. They used to have basically big saws to cut down trees, uh, pretty much horses, trailers, years ago, 100 years plus ago. The great harvest of lumber wouldn't last more than another year or two. As a matter of fact, in 1894, they had what they thought was their last big harvest. The fire brought that to a large halt, but if it wasn't for the fire, it wouldn't have ended so abruptly. When a person logs in the woods, 
They actually take and they take the larger parts of the tree, meaning the stalks. The stuff that's left behind, they pile up or they leave all on the ground, like the tops, the limbs of the trees. They dry out and it becomes very flammable. When they cut the lumber, they left a lot of the slashings on the ground. They just left it. And I have to say that was in large part greed. It had to be greed because they were after the money. They, you get paid for cutting the lumber, you don't get paid for cleaning the slashes, which was wrong. A drought is basically just a long duration of less than average precipitation. From 1891 to 1894, the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources actually recorded a loss of soil moisture during that particular several year period. From May to September of 1894, there were several reports of less than two inches of rain. Pine actually burns, if it's dry, it burns very fast, very hot, and that's why the fires uh, in a forest fire take off so rapidly because it's full of fuel and it's dry, it just, and it'll keep on going. Of course, if you have high precipitation and high humidity values, it's harder for the fire to actually get to those fuels because uh, the moisture inside of these fuels absorbs the heat of the fire. Now, if you have a lack of moisture, lack of precipitation, and especially over long duration, these fuels are very tender. Uh, the potential for this fire to heat uh, that particular fuel up to the uh, burning point is very high. And of course, uh, the more dry fuels you have across the region, the better it is for a particular wildfire to spread throughout that particular area. Here in the gravel pit, I think the big significance is, first of all, this was considered the eyesore of Hinkley. People hated it. The railroad dug up this dirt, this ground, to put under their railroad tracks. Well, some places it was as deep as 30 feet, this pit, which isn't as deep as it was then, it's like over a block wide, and this goes back more than two blocks. I mean, that's the huge dugout. It doesn't look as good as it does now with all of this green grass. I mean, it was brown, it was gravel. And people wanted them to fill it up. They didn't like this one bit. And they dug this pit. Probably it was, uh, I would estimate, about four or five years before the Great Hinkley Fire, and then suddenly, just a few months before the Great Hinkley Fire, a spring comes forth. And that spring filled up the whole area so people had a place to go to to survive the Great Hinkley Fire. It was roughly 100 people. Everybody made it except one. So if they wanted to survive, this is the most likely place to come. But who would know that? How could you tell? They didn't. But this gravel pit, all of a sudden, they were thankful that the railroad did that. In this Skunk Lake, you might say the division on the eastern and the western part was the tracks, which is where Jim Root backed his train. People got out in this shallow part, practically everybody, if not everybody, made it. Those who got out in the deeper part, nobody made it here. Why, when it's deeper? I don't know, that's one of the mysteries of the Great Hinkley Fire. The death toll in the Great Hinkley Fire, and I am counting Indians, and by the way, when they did the death count, they left out the Indians, which is uncalled for. I believe the death toll was a little over 600. It's probably over 1,000. It's probably over 1,200 for the Great Hinkley Fire because Dr. Stavan, he was one of the three doctors from Hinkley, he said most people that died from the Great Hinkley Fire, it wasn't in the Great Hinkley Fire. It was years later from having breathed the gases from the fire. When people first heard the reports, they said, no, that, that's, that's a little rich. That's kind of hard to believe. But when the survivors said the same thing, they knew it was true. As time goes on, you have more history. And as more history comes along, a lot of the other history has less room, less room on pages, less room in the minds of the people. If you 
talk to people in the early 1900s, more than half in the United States would have heard of this fire, one of the most terrifying forest fires in world history. It made the front pages of the papers throughout the world as a very great, awful fire. But if you talk to people today, I would say less than 1% of the United States population, less than 1% has ever heard of it. So the interesting thing about the fire in Hinckley of 1894 is that uh, the reports of the flames actually reaching near 200 feet high and the core of the fire, the temperature reaching about 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. We had reports of nails melting in barrels and rail cars, the, the wheels actually uh, fusing to the rail tracks themselves. Anything that was metal either had a different shape or melted. The Great Hinkley Fire moved well over 80 miles an hour and beyond. As a matter of fact, it had a lot of lift to it. There was a Bible that somebody had, I understand it was over in the Death Swamp, which is in North Hinkley. Pages came out of the Bible. They went 80 miles north and those same pages landed on First Street in Duluth. The Great Hinkley Fire, if I were to bring up the just that district alone I would say that it's it could be probably close to 25 30 miles wide it's it's sort of a an ovaly shape up to the from the northeast to the southwest and its length was more like closer to maybe 35 40 miles I believe we need to be on guard. The Great Hinkley Fire, totally unexpected the population. Nobody knows how bad fires can get. Nature has no limits as to how severe she can be. We need to remember the Great Hinkley Fire of 1894.